Hey guys, I've been spending some time in some antique stores lately and I went down to Southern Virginia this last weekend and I got this for four dollars and the guy, it was you know, a box on the bottom shelf, typical kind of thing and he told me, it's, uh, it's RHC there if you're trying to make that out, I don't know what that means he told me it was used on the front door of a dormitory on the University of Virginia before they renovated it years and years ago Vassar on the handle. That's the only en engraving. The logo might have been on this side uh, where this apparent repair is. So somebody went to a lot of time and trouble to keep this this locking mechanism uh, in service uh, and I don't know why. Uh, that just doesn't seem like a good investment of time but I haven't opened this up to find out what why they did that and probably won't to be honest with you. Anyway, what makes this interesting, this old antique lock, this no-name apparently, or RHC or whatever it is. Get that out of there, we'll move that out of the way. If you look up inside of there, uh, when I glanced at this, if I can get the, the camera to focus, you can see that it contains serrated pins, and for a lock this old, I felt like that was kind of unusual. So. I thought, well, this is worth four dollars. We might get four dollars worth of entertainment out of this, so let's see if we don't. Uh, I have not picked this. The only thing I've done to it is, uh, and somebody's going to probably shoot me, but it doesn't matter because we're probably going to destroy this lock in a few minutes. I sprayed WD-40 in there to kind of loosen the loosen everything up. A hundred years worth of gunk. So anyway, we know we have serrated pins, or at least one. So we're going to use the light tension, and I'm just going to feel, move forward, check in each pin to see if there's if I can find the binding one. And I may not be, be applying enough tension here, but I'd rather under tension it to begin with than over tension it. Okay, it's, they're all pretty springy. I'm gonna finish going through the stack and then apply a little more tension, just a hair and see if I can make something bind up inside of there. Get that first one. And got nothing. I'm going to try a little, rather than more tension this time, I'll be a little more aggressive with my pick. See if I can get some some of that characteristic clicking, that grinding feedback from serrated pins. And again, I got nothing. Okay, we're going to put a little more tension, be a little more aggressive, since we don't want this to take all day. And I got, oops, let me turn this a hair. Oh, crap, I had it. There we go. I don't know how that happened, but uh, I apparently wasn't putting enough attention, enough tension. Well, that was easier than I thought. Um, because this is such an old lock, and because it's unusual that we have serrated pins in there, or at least one, I'd like to open it up. But the problem that we're going to run into, and I've already tried to take the tailpiece off just to see if it was even possible, you can see that you know, 100 years worth of rust and corrosion has taken its toll on those screws. I can't get them out with a screwdriver. so. I'm going to take a short break. I'm going to drill those out on the drill press and I will not remove that tailpiece. I'll just drill it and then I'll come back and we'll restart the camera. So hold on. Okay, I drilled the heads of the screws off so I think we can get through. I tried not to damage the lock too much. Uh, it is an old lock. I try to not destroy things if I don't have to. And let's see if we can now pry off this tailpiece without relocking it. On, baby and there we go okay so we got the tailpiece off and we still have those two little pieces of screw sticking up that might cause us a problem as we try to uh, as we try to gut it yeah I'm pretty sure it will we're not going to be able to use a follower because of those screws sticking out there so let me just see where we are here let me turn this just a hair and what I'm going to do, turn just a hair more, I'm simply going to push it out and grab the upper pins one at a time 
and I believe I'm going to try to hold the upper or the key pins in with my left finger as it emerges. So let's see if we can't do that without causing a major detonation here. Okay, so far so good. Come out of there, you devil. That little screw is little piece of the screw still in the tail piece is messing me up a little bit. Okay, what happened here? Whoops. Okay, that should be five. And these are kind of weird looking. They got little, almost like T pins. Zoom here. Okay, I do not have a key for this to force these things out, so we may have to take them out not in the correct order. Just whatever will work. There we go. There's our serrated upper. I mean a serrated key pin. There's another serrated key pin. There's another serrated key pin. Another serrated key pin. And the last one is a fifth serrated key pin. Now this is interesting. I've got these reversed here. Let me just real quick get them up in the right place. Oops. Interesting for a couple of reasons. One, we have serrated key pins on all five. Uh, the second thing is we have variable length uppers, which is, it happens, but it's a little bit unusual. And then the last thing, and I don't know if you can quite make it out. I'm going to pick one up here and try to get the camera to cooperate. Let me wipe it off just a hair because it's got all that goop on it. All of these uppers have this weird little tit sticking out. And uh, of course that's anti-pick. That's to get caught on the chamber as, as it breaks. It's almost like the opposite of counter milling. So, Whoever put this thing together and designed it did not intend for anybody to pick it. And I think the only reason I was able to do it so easily is because probably the wear and tear on the 100 year old cylinder or whatever, combined with all the goop that was up inside of there, probably allowed me to overcome these little, basically like Schlage T-pins almost, except with the longer base. It allowed me to overcome those just a little bit easier than I would normally have been able to. Anyway, there you go. Um, a uh, hundred year old dormitory uh, entry from the University of Virginia. Anyway, everybody, thanks for your time. Stay safe and uh, Merry Christmas.